Joining me is former Hereford United player Paul McLaughlin. Paul, you joined Hereford in the summer of 1987. What were your first impressions of Hereford United? Um, I've been given sort of quite good information because Terry Cooper and Clyde Middlemass, um, who were running Bristol City at the time, and, and John Newman had spoken to them, and they gave me a really good rundown of exactly what the club was like, where it was going, and John had shown real interest in me, so... Obviously, I was a bit devastated at the time leaving Bristol City as my hometown club, and I'd really wanted to do well there. And it was just one of those things. The club was successful, had players in my position, and they actually felt it would just be better for my career, as was proven in, in hindsight, um, to go and play some regular first-team football. So when I arrived, um, I could see that John wanted to get things going quite quickly, and there was there'd been a little bit of a base of the club, but some of the, quite a few new players arrived that, that summer. Um, and I was, I was really excited about the whole season, if I'm honest. John Newman left quite early in the 87-88 season. Ian Bowyer took over as manager. How did the dressing room react to the change in management personnel? I think it was, so it was, it was a strange feeling because for people like myself that had just arrived, John was such a nice guy. John Newman's style was that he'd help you do things for you and you'd want to pull for him when he spoke. You know, you really wanted to do your best for how, how John had treated you. He was he was so good in everything that he did. Um, but maybe some of the players that had been there for a little while felt it had been coming for some time. I don't know why that was. They'd suddenly hit a little bit of a wall. They couldn't quite change it. And maybe they felt like it was the last throw of the dice. And so when it came, it came quite smooth. Whereas I was thinking that people wouldn't be happy with it at all. It just, it just rolled straight forward in, in, in fact at the time obviously Ian had come in as the coach and, and then just took, took straight over and, and it, don't get me wrong it's like all things as a player you, you accept things quickly because that's the way it is you're not going to change it and you just get on with it but yeah I, I was a little bit disappointed because I was always quite excited looking forward to what John Newman was going to do and help me just a different management style although obviously it was really successful under Ian Bowyer so you just have to get on with it as a player. The second season, you scored a lot more goals for Hereford. Why do you think that was? Uh, it was it was interesting. Two things happened. Um, first of all, um, the first season, um, I'd started really, really well. Now, a lot of people don't know I got um, a blood poisoning illness. I was out for about three months. I was in a really, really bad way. Um, I was at um, South Mid Hospital. I was in the hospital for two weeks um, and it was from food poisoning. It was really unusual. I'd never come across anything and at first I was really worried because no one seemed to know what was wrong with me and there was a little bit of contact with the club. Uh, Ian had understood what was happening and, and was great about it. Um, what, so strangest thing ever, when I got back, the club had um, changed the way it was, it was running and Ian had decided to build a little bit of a bigger first team squad of maybe 18 players and so the six sort of players that didn't play would support the reserves and play with the youth team players so he chose different weeks when we play and strangely enough um, uh, Bristol City when I think it was called the Mac Bar League or something like that it was a reserve league and Ian had decided that to, like I said to, to make sure all the first team integrated so well I think maybe for when the younger players play with the first team they'd, they'd understand they'd be a little bit more comfortable with us which was a great idea it was really forward thinking actually and he said to me, Paul, it would make it easier for you. Uh, maybe you should play when we play Bristol City away. You're in Bristol, you could go back down there. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. And he just casually said to me, he said, where would you like to play? He said, what position do you want to play? You can play where you want. And I said, uh, yeah, I'll have a go playing up front. Why not? I said, I'll enjoy that. And um, I think I scored a couple at Ashton Gate. Um, Ian said, wow, that's worked well. And then pre-season... And we spent a little bit of time doing it, and I just suddenly started and immediately struck up a really good relationship with Phil Stan. And it's funny how some things people think that managers are great and they plan things. It really was just by luck that it was just a coincidence. I said I'd play up front, quite enjoyed it, it went well. He gave me some really good advice about what sort of runs to, to make. And the two of us, we were very opposite, me and Phil, how we played the game. He was much more um, direct. Of Fun, real fun player, whereas I was always coming towards the ball and wanted to come and get the ball. He was better pulling away from it. And there was just a balance between us. And I just think that helped us both. Ian gave me some good advice on corners, free kicks, set pieces, how to play. And, and I, I was just really enthused about playing a new position. 
um, I think that just, just helped me with the goal tally. Your goals um, gave a lot of notice to other clubs. Phil went to Notts County and yourself went to Wolves. Was it a tough decision to leave Edgar Street? It was. It was because a lot, a lot of supporters don't quite understand how, how you know football really works. Um, if I'm honest, I would have stayed. I wanted to stay because I felt that my career was really taking off and I wanted to stay at the club and, and the club made me a great offer was nothing like that whatsoever but the th- truth is it's a very short career uh, Wolves you know they tripled my wage um, and it, like I said I'm looking at my wife I'm just uh, thinking about having children it's a, you know it's such a short time that you've got to make uh, a financial success you, you just can't turn that down you don't know if it's ever going to come for you again I'd already had that injury before I was thinking crikey I might not get a financial offer like this if it doesn't go well um, so, yeah, sometimes you, you can't just think about your football. You do have to think about your whole family, your career. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it was tough. I'd, um, I had real reservations about it because I knew that I'd be going as backup. I felt really confident about that. I felt that I'd do well uh, in terms of how I would, I would progress. But, it, you know, it was ultimately always going to be difficult. Steve Bullard didn't pick for England. Andy Much was in the B team for England. And they were a great partnership. So it was like sort of starting over again. So yeah, if, if if in truth it wasn't just about finance, I would have stayed. You scored against Hereford for Walsall and Mansfield after you left Wolves. As a, as a professional, was it hard scoring against your former teams? It was difficult because I knew some of the guys still really, really well and it, it was really awkward. Um, you, uh, you just have to get on with the game. You know, the, again, you realise pretty quickly that it's, it's just such a profession. It's a career. There's no personal choice. And of course, you're aware of the individuals, but you literally just have to devote yourself to the club you're at, whoever's paying your wages. And it's very clinical like that. And I think that that's possibly the hardest thing, again, to get across to supporters because they think that you have more decisions than you do. You don't. You really have to just go where you're wanted and where your services are demanded. And, and do the best you can. And that's not always where you want to go, if I'm honest. You know, I would have loved to have come back to Hereford, but at the time, it just that just wasn't an option. Are you still involved in football now? I am. Um, so I've been really lucky. Life's been, been quite kind to me, Matt. Um, after I finished my playing career, I had a good non-league career, um, playing locally. I played for Forest Green. Um, I played for Western Supermare. And then I played for my local club which is Cleveland Town um, I went into coaching um, junior coaching junior clubs I ran my own sort of coaching school for quite a little bit of time for about 10 years and um, local schools started inviting me to come in to teach sport in general and I've been doing that sort of for well wow, about the last 20 years um, and I still coach um, at schools now but um, about two years ago um, I just left so about four years ago I, I no, five years ago I apologise five years ago I was I got invited back into first team football um, which I wasn't always too keen to do but I'd, I'd taken my um, my level two I'd got my UEFA B licence and I got involved at Southern League Football um, I was assistant coach um, at Cleveland Town and then I got actually got the manager's job we had an academy and we set up a B Tech we were, it became full time we were working with 16 to 19 year olds at the club and I must admit I absolutely loved it. Unfortunately for the business person that was running it, it wasn't a financial success so, so that stopped. Um, and now what I find is um, first team coaching and, and sort of first team level of football, um, I have to have an interest in it. I don't want to just go anywhere. I'm not interested in going anywhere. My, my life's quite nice. Uh, 